I'm not going to read everything about David's life to all of his episodes and things, but I will uh, go back through here and give you a pretty much. We're trying to go back and review the map and God's plan of the ages, and David is such an important person that we just had to had to see some of his life, not just that David was king of Israel, he was the first king that God chose. This is the only king that God ever had, wanted to have Israel to have. This is the king. And he spoke it all the way from the last chapters of the book of Genesis. And let's go back there real quick for just a moment. Might find it in this old Bible. In the 49th chapter, this is one of my favorite chapters. I want to read here, starting with verse number 1, in the 49th chapter. And Jacob summoned his sons and said, Assemble yourselves that I may tell you what shall befall you in the days to come. This is pure divine prophecy. Pure divine prophecy. Gather together and hear, O sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn. Preeminent in dignity, preeminent in power, uncontrolled as water. You shall not have preeminence. He was supposed to, but this is rejecting the firstborn again because you went to your father's bed. He went in there to his father's wife and fornicated with her. Then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are implements of Hamas. We hear about Hamas in the land. That's what he called them here. You're Hamas. You're cruel. You're violent. Let my soul not enter into their council. Let not my glory be united with their assembly, because their anger slew men, and in their self-will they lamed oxen. Cursed be their anger. Cursed be their Hamas, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will despise them in Jacob. I will disperse them in Jacob, that is. Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son shall bow down to you. Judah is a lion's well. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He crouches, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who dares to rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. For the ruler's, for the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And him sh to him shall be obedience of the peoples. He ties his foal to the vine and his donkey's coal to the choice vine. He washes his garments in wine and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are dull from wine and his teeth are white from milk. Isaiah 63 Revelation, the 19th chapter, that's all about this, but it's talking about Jesus to come. And he's going to be of the loins of David. This shall be the son right here. This is the man. And David went through a lot of grief and troubles and, and tribulations. He, he went through it in the early part of his life, and yet he followed God every time. He, he accepted God's elected one, his elect, which was Saul, and he wouldn't raise his hand against him. And Saul removed from him, from his presence, and he appointed him a commander over a thousand, and he went out, and he came in before the people. He was a, he was a general. He was the supreme commander. And David was prospering all his days, for the Lord was with him. For Saul saw that he was prospering greatly, and he dreaded him. He hated his very company, and yet David loved him. I've experienced this in my life, have you? 
Have you loved someone so much that, that you could not even explain it and yet they despise you? Have you ever done that? But all Israel and Judah loved David and he went out and he came in before him. Then Saul said to David, he is my older, Here is my older daughter, Merib. I will give her to you as a wife. Only be, valiant man, be a valiant man for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul thought, my hand shall not be against him, but let the land, hands of the Philistines be against him. He's going to send him out there to get him killed. David said to Saul, Who am I, and what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be the king's son-in-law? So it came about the time that Merah, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David that she was given to Adriel, the Mehalothite, for a wife. He lied to him. He's an Indian giver, so to speak. Now Micah, David's daughter, loved David. And when they told Saul the thing was agreeable to him, and Saul thought, I will give her to him, for she may become a snare to him. She's ornery. I know this girl, and if I let her marry her, he's going to have a hard time. I'm going I'm to curse him by giving him the white elephant, so to speak. You know, if you wanted to curse your enemy back in India, you gave him a white elephant. A white elephant was a sacred elephant, and if they would go broke trying to take care of this white elephant. Sometimes that becomes that happens with the land, sometimes it happens with people. It's a snare. Sometimes a man's worst enemy is his wife. And that's what Saul was Saul was wishing upon David. And the hand of the Philistines may be against him. Therefore Saul said to David, For a second time you may be my son-in-law today. So Saul commanded his servants, Speak to David, secretly to saying, Behold, the king delights in you, and all his servants love you, and now therefore become the king's son-in-law. I'm going to give him the white elephant. I'm going to curse him. So Saul, Saul's servants spoke to these words to David, but David said, it is a trivial thing in sight to become the king's son-in-law, since I am poor man and lightly esteemed. David is what? He's humble. And the servants of all reported him according to the words which David spoke. And thus shall they say to David, the king does not desire any dowry except the hundred foreskins of the Philistines. <laughs> the hundred foreskins of the Philistines are going to get him killed, you know. This is, this is what he wants. I said, don't bring me any dowry. I just want you to bring me a hundred foreskins. That means he has to kill at least a hundred Philistines to take vengeance on the king's enemies. Now Saul planned to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. Remember, these Philistines, there was a bunch of giants among them. There was at least four other giants. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David to become the king's son-in-law before the days had, in, had expired. And David rose up and went to his men, and he struck down 200 men among the Philistines, and then David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full number to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And so Saul gave him Micah, Michael, his daughter, for a wife. When Saul saw that he knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michael, son's daughter, loved him, Saul was even more afraid of David. Thus Saul was David's enemy continually. Here his, his father-in-law became his enemy. He gave him an honorary wife to make him miserable, and he kept sending him out on jobs they thought he was going to get him killed on. And David kept prospering. Then the commanders of the Philistines went out to battle, and it happened that as often as they went out that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, that his name was highly esteemed. He asked him for a hundred foreskins, he gave him two hundred. Now Saul told Jonathan, his son, and all his servants to put David to death. Now he's going to put a hit out on him, he's going to put a contract out on David. And he tells Jonathan, his son, that. But Jonathan's son's 
Saul's son greatly delighted in David. So Jonathan told David, Saul, my father, is seeking to put you to death. Now therefore, please be on guard in the morning and stay in the secret place and hide yourself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where I am. If I will speak with my father about you, I will find out anything that I shall tell you. Then Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, Do not let the king sin against his servant, David, since he has not sinned against you, and since these deeds have been very beneficial to you. For he took his life in his hands, and he struck the Philistine. And the Lord brought about a great deliverance for all of Israel, and you saw it, and rejoiced in it. Why then will you sin against the innocent blood by putting David to death without a cause? You know what, when you go against God's will, you don't do things logically, do you? Saul listened to the voice of Jonathan, and Saul bowed. And the Lord lives, he said, I will not put, I will not put him to death. Then Jonathan called David, and Jonathan told him all these words. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as formerly. But there was a war again. David went out and fought with the Philistines and defeated them with a great slaughter, so that they fled before him. And there was an evil spirit from the Lord on Saul. Now, Sharon asked this a while ago. She said, how can an evil spirit be sent from God by God? How, the evil spirits don't have anything from God. You know, God protects us. He protects us. He, as you read the book of Job, you'll see the protection. What God did is he gave a spirit, an evil spirit, he allowed that evil spirit to have permission to pester Saul. He dropped the barrier. And the spirit, evil spirit of the Lord, as it was sitting in his house with his spirit in his hand, and David was playing the harp with his hand, soothing again Saul. And Saul tried to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence so that he struck the spear into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. David lived in constant fear of his life from his father-in-law. Sometimes you have parents, sometimes you have children. It's horrible stories that we can think of, you know that? These are real stories. I had a real close friend of mine, and uh, he had a neighbor that was really close to him. And this neighbor, uh, he was becoming very old, uh, and he died. He lived nearly 100 years old, but he died, and his wife was left behind. And they had a grandson, and grandson came to live with them, or with her, in that home. And he wondered what she had. And he killed her and cut her up in pieces and put her in a garbage can. Evil. She loved that boy. She cherished that son, and yet, he did that to her. Sometimes you have a father and mother and nothing you can do will ever please them. There's no way, I don't care what you do, it's not going to happen. Sometimes you have children that you love so much that have no respect for you at all. That would put you on hospice if they had a chance to take everything you had. Simple as that. Now Saul again Evil is in his heart. It's the third time now. The third time that he tries to kill him. So Saul sent the messenger to David's house to watch him in order to put him to death in the morning. But Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, if, if you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be put to death. Get out of here. So Michael let David down through the window. And he went out and fled in his cave. And Michael took the high household idol. She took the household idol. She was an idolater. And laid it on the bed and put a quilt of goat's hair at its head and covered it with clothes. 
Then Saul sent messengers to take David, and he said, He's sick. Then Saul sent his messengers to see David, saying, Bring him to me on his bed, that I may put him to death. Go and kill him. I don't care what he swore to his son. This evil spirit in his heart with jealousy wants him dead. When the messengers entered, behold, the household idol was on the bed with a quilt covered with goat's hair on its head. And Saul said to Michael, Why have you deceived me like this and let my enemy go that he has escaped? And Michael said to Saul, He said to me, Let me go. Why should I put you to death? Now David fled and escaped and came to Samuel at Ramah, told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and they stayed in Neo. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Neo in Ramah. And Saul sent Bessard to take David, because when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying with Samuel standing and presiding over them, the Spirit of the Lord came upon the messenger Saul, and they also prophesied. And it was told Saul that he sent other messengers, and they also prophesied. What are they saying? What are they saying? You know, we saw Saul raving a while ago in madness in Mantua Mene. And here, they're doing the same thing, except now they're speaking and praying to God. Here we have evil spirits speaking in an unknown language to the gods, and we have the prophets of God speaking out God prophecies, but in a different way. Saul sent his messengers again the third time, and they also prophesied. Then he himself went to Ramah, and he came as far as a well that is in Siku, and he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And someone said, Behold, they are at the Naoth in Ramah. And he proceeded there to Naoth and Ramah, and the Spirit of God came upon him also. So that he went along prophesying continually until he came to Naoth and Ramah. And he also stripped off all his clothes, and he too prophesied before Samuel, and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Therefore, they say, is Saul among the prophets. Boy, God is powerful, isn't he? He is powerful. This man was so much, you, you know, you, are you in love? Have you ever been in love? Have you ever been in love? Have you ever been in hate? You know, hate is as strong as love. If you can be in love, you can be in hate also. And David was in hate. Wanting to kill David, he was in hate. Not in love, but he was in hate, trying to kill him. Being in hate. Not in love. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor and glory. Help us to be in love, not in hate. Please use your word wherever it goes in the world that it might honor you. And help us follow like David followed you. And help us learn lessons from these messages in the Old Testament that might place our feet correctly before you. Father, knit our hearts with your heart and our hands in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.